was born in Karachi. So I'm actually from uh, from Karachi. That's my hometown. I went to school there. I went to college there. Um, I had my first two jobs in Karachi as well. Um, so straight out of college, um, working as a teacher in a school, which I loved for two years, and then with American Express. Um, I moved to Dubai in 1993, which was more than 25 years ago. Um, and I went straight into a corporate job. I was very lucky to be hired by a very large multinational media company that was looking to set up uh, in the Middle East. Um, and I was actually hired as a call center agent um, in the customer service division. And I stayed with them for 15 years. Um, and a lot of people used to tell me this is a long time for someone to be in a company. Um, but I think I was very lucky because I I was able to work with some incredibly uh, smart people uh, and some generous people because they taught me a lot. Um, and I also was able to grow. So I wasn't doing obviously the same thing uh, for so many years. Um, and um, when I left 15 years later, I was the regional head for Middle East and Africa. Um, it was a very interesting journey. It was a lot of hard work. And yes, breaking glass ceilings. Um, now, let me remind you, this was mid 90s. Yeah, so things were very different then in the world. Uh, and also in UAE uh, from what they are today. But um, there weren't a lot of women in senior roles even then. So I didn't have a lot of role models to look up to within the corporate um, structure that I was in. But I have to say, I think I was very privileged to have worked in that company because it gave me an excellent foundation uh, for professionalism and for service standards and best practice. And that really did become the cornerstone of you know, what I'm doing today and where I am today in my corporate life. Um, I left when I was at a stage of burnout. And I think anyone who's worked in the corporate commercial world for a number of years will know that. We've had two people speaking from KPMG. I'm sure they know what that's about because they work some unreal hours um, there. Um, I left and I decided to follow my passion, which is food and cooking, still is. I started a food business and I then went on to set up and run a restaurant in Dubai. Uh, a lot of people thought I was crazy. Um, that was the probably the toughest thing I've ever done in my life. Tougher than a corporate career in a lot of ways. I think physically and emotionally, it was extremely demanding. Um, so that's been a journey of almost 30 years, if I count my time in Pakistan and here. Yes, it's been a different experience working in the UAE, because as, as a couple of speakers said earlier, that living in UAE, we're very lucky, uh, especially single women, because of the fact, even back then when I moved here, I never felt unsafe. Um, not that I was, you know, a big, uh, I was not a very social person in those days. I didn't have much of a social life. Um, but I never felt unsafe and uh, I always felt that in any case when you whenever you had to interact with the authorities here whether it was with the police or with immigration or anyone they were extremely respectful and very um, supportive in every way you know when they would see a single woman I have I've never in my 25 plus years in this country ever felt that so I think that's an amazing and I think I'm very blessed to have lived here for such a long time um, so there are some, when I was sort of, I think I asked you this question as well when I was doing my preparation for this um, session is there's a lot of life lessons that I've learned uh, over the last 25 or 30 years. And keeping in mind this very important topic of empowering women, which I think is close to every woman's heart. I don't think there's a woman on the planet who doesn't in some way uh, feel very passionately about it and contribute to it in some way. Um, I felt that the best way I could do that is by sharing some some of the life lessons that I learned. And uh, I know there's a lot of young women uh, on the audience and even in the speakers. Um, so I wanted to actually share that. And I've, I made a few a few notes. Um, a couple of things that I went through in my journey is I. I think that a lot of us go through a time when we're lost or confused, whether it's directly out of college or whether it's after your first job. I think it was Uruj who mentioned that she her education was in one field and then she decided to go into accountancy. It's OK to be lost. It's not not something that I don't think I don't think there's anyone on the planet who has never felt like that. 
the important thing is to not question your your strength and your inner ability to do things and to face challenges and to overcome them i think that's where we do ourselves in um we we don't do ourselves justice as women you said earlier when you were opening this session about pakistani women and how um, all i can say about pakistani women is that we are extremely resilient um i don't think we even recognize our own strength um till we really are put to the test uh and i think that's generally true for women across the globe but particularly with pakistani women um i think there is a there's a perception that we come from a very conservative culture and there are all these you know these uh, societal sort of um, restrictions but when a woman is put to the test um she more than achieves you know what what the goal is so i think the worst thing you can do is to question your ability or your strength because there will be times when you won't get the support uh, that you're looking for if you make a change if you you're looking to make a change and i've gone through that personally but you do have to look within yourself and find that strength so that's the one thing that the, that's the first most important message i'd like to give um the other thing is if you are struggling to find your calling or your passion the best place to look is within yourself so you need to kind of tap into your strengths i think the first place and the best place to find what you really want to do with your life is to uh, figure out what identify your values what is it that really makes you um what you feel passionate about what is it that you love doing what is it that gets you inspired and if you're not able to kind of find the next step then look for someone who has had a similar journey or who is interested in a similar thing and try to get as haziba said i think coaching and counseling it's it's underrated uh it's a, it, you'd be very lucky if you could find someone who could counsel you or mentor you and help you along your journey um to sort of find a step what is the next step to getting to what i want to do i mean you sometimes you don't even know where to start um so that's that's what i would say and be honest with yourself when you ask yourself those questions you need to be extremely honest um one thing that i've i've uh, experienced last year with covid i think with all of the the fact that our lives have been upended right there's been so many redundancies and people have have thought about making career changes because they really realized that they've spent all their time doing stuff that they really don't like and they want to do something different um so there have been long periods where one is feeling financially strained because you know obviously you're not earning and i think at a time like that if you can set aside your troubles and actually help someone who reaches out and needs help there's nothing more gratifying than that and i have experienced that myself last year um there was a very good initiative uh, initiated by the pakistani association here from the ladies forum and i had the opportunity to counsel and mentor 16 or 20 women and these are women who were sitting at home and they had seen their husbands lose their jobs and they were feeling extremely helpless but there's that passion and that drive to contribute and do something and really be part of the solution and it was such an honor to be able to just you know talk these women through what they wanted to do and give them the moral support and the guidance that i would so i would just say to every woman out there and i know a couple of the ladies who spoke before me have said the same thing it's very important to support each other uh in whatever phase of your corporate career or your life you're in because even women who especially women who are in high pressure jobs they really need support and they need counseling and a lot of times they don't know where to look uh particularly in uae if you're living alone or you don't have your family with you it can be a very difficult time um the other thing that i would say is that when you do finally find your path and you find your passion and your calling don't forget to pay it forward so remember to to find places where you can um help other women you know um and i think women helping women is the is the first step i think even hasiba said this that it's not just about other people helping you i think initially we first need to figure out what is it that we want to do having tapping into that inner strength and that inner potential so i think that is probably the most important thing and if you can do that when you yourself are struggling there is nothing more gratifying than that sorry that was a longer introduction i think than you expected <laughs> 
So Adi, your talks are really impressive, and uh, these are the pearls. These are the pearls of uh, the life experiences that you have uh, collected for the audience, and uh, um, I guess that um, uh, anyone who is listening will get a great value out of it. So, I mean, you know, time doesn't permit. I would like actually to speak on and on. You have a lot of experience and. You rightly said that education, money, mentoring, support for women, getting a platform. That's why Berkeley, uh, Mr. Club, for women, Bay, is always supportive uh, for women who need any mm -hmm. kind of support, like a training, a consultancy. And people like you, of course, uh, are always a help for the women in UAE and the women in Pakistan. I'm sure that uh, your doors are open and anytime if they need any support, they can approach us or you directly for any kind of assistance. So I would request you for your closing remarks for the day. Sure. Um, so I, I wanted to tell you that that is what I do now. In the last six years, I am working as a business consultant and a trainer, corporate trainer. And that is my passion. So my entire journey, I think, has brought me to this place where I have finally found my calling. My real passion is working with people. Mm -hmm. uh, and through my corporate training, I help people tap into sometimes hidden potential that they don't even know they have, bringing it out and being the best version of themselves at home, in their work lives, in every aspect. And I think, um, yes, absolutely. I'm always looking for opportunities where I'm able to contribute. I am, um, I am a, um, I think I'm one of the, I think every, every expat Pakistani feels this way. When you move away from your country, that, that love for your country develops even more and more. And I really look forward to one day, inshallah, being able to, to be part of the great journey that Pakistan is on right now. There's such amazing things mm -hmm. happening in our country, uh, also in the space of women empowerment. I mean, you see women, like you said, there are women now in, in professions that one never I never saw when I was living there and I haven't seen for so many years. You know, we have we have pilots, we have women getting into martial arts and, and teaching self-defense. We have women who are mountain climbers and they're teaching other women how to do it. Um, and, you know, they are mechanics and they are they're on. I mean, th there's just a lot happening in the space of women empowerment. I think that um, any opportunity to be able to do that would be a privilege. Um, and I think just one last thing uh, that I think Haziba touched on as well is that there is a lot of awareness about all the social ills that exist in our society right now, which hold women back. And I think media is doing its part. Um, there's a lot of a lot of stories that are coming out through through our serials and our dramas. I'm going to take this opportunity, this platform to to promote the great, the amazing kind of dramas that are coming out of Pakistan, um, production quality and all of that. But I think the stories that they focus on and, and the message that's going out is very important. Um, empowering women is about understanding what your inner strength is and creating an environment for a woman where she has choices, right? It's about giving women the control back on their lives, whether it's choosing to study as opposed to getting married at the right age or whether it's about covering up or not covering up, or whether it's um, setting up a business with no background and no experience because you want to support your family, you want to support your parents or your, your husband and your kids. I think if we as women, I, I am very conscious of the fact that I am one of the privileged, the minority who've had a great education and who've had an experience, a, a career where I've been able to learn so much. And if there is any opportunity for me to help someone who hasn't been that privileged, then that's my duty as a, as a Pakistani, at first as a human being and as a Muslim, and then as a Pakistani. So I would always, I would encourage every, and, and you've, you have an amazing panel of women here and some of the other programs you've done. Uh, and I'm sure that every woman on that panel is, is going to say the same thing. So yeah, I, I'm really glad that, that you've, You've invited all of us, and I really want to thank you for letting me speak on this platform. Thank you.